What is going on guys, it's Amit and you're watching DevDreamer. Welcome back to lesson 48 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about higher order functions. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 48. So in this lesson, let's learn all about higher order functions. So far, we've learned quite a lot about functions. We've looked at function declarations, expressions, parameters and arguments, the return value, arrow functions, and much more. We're now going to move on to advanced functions. Understanding functions at this level will really set you apart from the average JavaScript developer. So we're going to start in this lesson with understanding the concept of higher order functions. Okay, so let's start at the very top then. What are higher order functions? To understand this, let's first understand that in JavaScript, functions are known as first class citizens or first class objects. And all this basically means is that we're able to use functions like any other value. So we can store them inside variables, as you've seen with function expressions and arrow functions. We can pass functions as parameters, we can use them as arguments, and we can even return functions from another function. So then, what are higher order functions? Well, higher order functions are just that. They are functions that receive a function as an argument or return the function as an output. The first thing to know is that we've actually already been using higher order functions throughout this series. For example, certain array methods, such as the map method, is a higher order function because it too takes a function as an argument. Let's go ahead and create an arrow function. So we'll say const call this double. This will take a single parameter and we're going to simply return n multiplied by two. Okay, next I'm going to create an array of numbers and we'll just go for one, two, three, four, five. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say let result be assigned the value of our nums array. So nums dot, and now we're looking for the map method. And if you recall from our lesson on array methods, the map method basically takes an array and maps those values to new array values. So here what we want to do is we want to take these numbers and we want to double them. So here we say parentheses and then we simply supply the function. Finally, we'll go ahead and log this to the console. So console.log result. Let's save and let's see what we get. Okay, so as expected then, result is a new array with these doubled numbers. So what's happening here then is we're using the built-in array map method, which takes a function as an argument. So this is an example of a built-in higher order function. It's a function or method that uses another function as an argument. Also here, just a quick side note, we can also use the spread operator to pull these values out. Okay, another example of a built-in higher order function would be the add event listener method. We've been looking at this briefly, but we will of course be looking at this in detail when we cover the document object model and events. For now, let's understand why this is also a built-in higher order function. So let's get rid of this. And in our HTML, I'm just going to add a paragraph tag We'll give this an ID of P and then also a button. And we'll give this an ID of BTN and we'll just say, click me. Okay. And now in our JavaScript, we're going to first of all target both of these elements. So we're going to say const P tag is assigned the value of document dot get element by ID. And we'll say P and then to target the button, button and ID button as well. Okay, now that we're targeting our paragraph tag and the button, what we can do down here is we can say button dot add event listener. And this takes two arguments. The first is the actual event. So we're going to say click. And the second argument is going to be this function. We'll just go for an arrow function and then we'll target the paragraph tag and we'll say dot inner text subscribe to dev dreamer. Okay, so once again, as you can see, the add event listener method is an example of a higher order function. Why? Because for one of its arguments, we're using a function. So this is basically a function that uses another function as its argument. And just to test if this works, we'll click this and we get subscribed to DevDreamer. Once again, guys, we will be looking at the document object model in detail very, very soon. So now that we understand what higher order functions are, let's understand the advantages behind them. So one of the main advantages of using higher order functions is that they can be reused dynamically. For example, with the built-in map method, we can do different things to the array supplied. 
If it's numbers, we can double them or we can square them. If it's a string, we can set them to lowercase or uppercase. So higher order functions are really powerful because they are dynamic. Now, of the next few lessons, we'll see examples of higher order functions as we dive deeper into learning all about advanced functions. Okay, so that's all about higher order functions. Let's go ahead and summarize. So in JavaScript, functions are known as first class citizens or first class objects. This means they can be used as any other value. We can create them with literals, we can store them as variables, and as we've seen in these examples, we can even pass them as arguments for other functions. Higher order functions can receive a function as an argument or return the function as an output. JavaScript has built-in methods that are higher order functions, such as the map method and the add event listener. And finally, what makes higher order functions so powerful is their dynamic reusability. So guys, that's it for this lesson. That's all about higher order functions. In the next lesson, we're going to continue our advanced understanding of functions by taking a look at pure functions. So as always, be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.